I didn't know a lot of neon gas comes from the Ukraine. And what do you need neon gas for? You need neon gas to make semiconductor wafers. <laughs> Who knew that? <laughs> so it's just one thing after another after another. Um, and, you know, and the logistical problems of we don't have enough ships that bring cars across the ocean. Um, and when the Felicity Ace went down, that was one more. So we're 6,000 units in the hole on top of the 50,000 units we were probably in the hole as an industry for those types of things to, you know, to get cars from here to there. So if I only have to put them on a train or a truck, <laughs> it's always easier. You're taking a factory that's made SUVs, and I think you made C-Classes there. Made C-Classes well. at one point. What else did you make there? Uh, it's really always been SUVs, R-Class, back in the day, M-Class. Yeah. Um, and then uh, C-Class. And then C-Class. Yeah. But all ICE or hybrid. Mm -hmm. Now you're making a massive shift. EQS SUVs are mm -hmm. going to come out of there. Yeah. Yeah, we're building them now. What goes into shifting an ICE factory to an EV factory? Well, it's a, it's an investment for sure, and because obviously you think about how much is changing in the car, mm -hmm. uh, it's a massive change for the car. Uh, but what it does is, in the way we're trying to do it, is we're trying to build the when when you because in essence you're rebuilding part of the factory, and so you're having to rebuild it with the flexibility in mind to be able to do both. And which is, in a way, it's a little bit harder than doing one or the other uh, because you want to build something where you could have uh, a GLE 450 going down the line and right in front of it, you could have an EQE SUV. Mm. So obviously, with that flexibility, there's a cost to it. Uh, but at the same time, there's a benefit. There's a huge benefit. And especially in this transitioning time where we're transitioning to electric, and that is a factory, we have to keep in mind, that's the factory where we build those cars for the world, not just for USA. And so EQE SUV, EQS SUV, uh, and for that matter, their ICE counterparts, uh, GLE, GLS, that is the sole source uh, for those cars. And when you say benefit, would one of the biggest benefits be you can flex the amount of production. Like, for example, if volume exceeds expectations on EQE SUV, you can bring it up. Exactly. And bring ICE down or vice versa. Is yeah, that no, that's exactly the idea. You're, you're building with flexibility because you know that the transition to ICE and EV is happening uh, over time, and it's happening very differently in different markets. Uh, when I look at North America, gosh, and, and if you say USA and or Canada, uh, they're one country, but it's almost like m several countries in the same country. If I look at the U.S., uh, the West Coast is its own thing. Uh, so when California you say its own thing, regional tastes. Yeah, regional tastes, exactly. E the EV thing has been happening in California for years. Um, and if you then as you go east, you don't see it as much. You start to see it pick up again maybe on the coasts, but mm. nothing like... Uh, nothing like California. You could, it, I was 10 years ago in California when we were working on the B class mm -hmm. and, and it was already there. Electric had happened. And but in minuscule numbers. In, in, like in, in smaller numbers, but you saw it and compared to what we saw on the East Coast, mm -hmm. you just didn't see it. Much in the same way Canada, you have that in, in BC. So Vancouver is, uh, EV is, is really happening there. Okay, so let's pick up on that. You now have some learning mm -hmm. because you've brought out your first I would say real EV mm -hmm. for the market, at least for the U.S. market. That's the EQS. Right. But let's put aside the car itself, but you're the product planner. You've been the product planner for a long time. Has that car met expectations, uh, exceeded expectations, it's below expectations, in terms of a sales perspective? Um, well, uh, right now it's exceeded expectations because we don't have enough of them. So Is that's that a, a very virus thing or people are... We gotta have a luxury EV. Yeah, it, it's it's hard to say right now because you don't have enough, and so n even if we wanted more, we couldn't get them. That's everything. But yeah, but what we see, and and honestly, the best gauge of that because the sales gauge right now is a little bit off the charts because you just no one has enough cars, so We're on the bizarre it's it's world. easy to look successful. I think I think that's what you have to watch out for. Is you can think you're really smart, and and maybe let's just see. It, we're we're still a year or two away. To me, the better gauge has been the response uh, from the people who drive it, and and quite honestly, uh, the journalists who drive the car. 
And uh, because I, I always feel like we get a pretty good, you know, very informed group of journalists in North America, be it Canada or the U.S. Mm -hmm. They know what they're looking at. You're not going to fool you guys into thinking, hey, this is a great car. No, you know if it is or not mm -hmm. uh, because you drive the competitors and you know what you're talking about. So mm -hmm. that's a, a better gauge. And then I just look at the numbers on the car in terms of, uh, what we wanted from a range perspective compared to what it does real world, mm -hmm. I'm thrilled with. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, certification values are one thing, and you, you have to have a certain hurdle because there's a sort of, th in the U.S., it's 300 miles, it's 400 kilometers here, um, and we, we meet those on the certification values and we exceed them in real world. And, and to me, those are values, those are things that I can really talk to, because I, I try to think about as successful one customer at a time. Mm -hmm. And if I can have a great conversation with a customer and they're thrilled, mm -hmm. and you have a few more of those, it's a trend. And uh, so it's, it's kind of nice to see, and mm -hmm. to sum it up, we're, we're thrilled with the EQS. Okay, so let's bring this back to the factory. The mm -hmm. EQS, that's Sindelfingen. Mm -hmm. But the EQS SUV, that's gonna be here. What are three of the biggest investments, obviously from a cost perspective, in making this switch? You know, in the, in the factory itself, just the hardware. Yeah, uh, factory, you know, things not the have car development. The yeah, yeah, hey, for. within the factory, uh, just just the hardware within the factory. You, you know, you have to get, uh, the line's gonna be a little bit different. It's an investment in just what what's that production look like? You have to prepare, uh, you know, handling a battery. Th that's a different ball game. And whether it's, and, and where are you gonna source it? Uh, so it's it's all the logistical things just to imagine that a huge portion of the car is incredibly different than everything else you've built before. And do, does, a, does, a, does a GLS 450 and an EQS SUV go down the same line? They, they, they will be able to do that. And that's the investment in the factory to build that flexibility because you need to, and, and again, it comes to sequencing and, and uh, how the parts are coming in, it's all just in time, but you need to have that kind of flexibility to say, okay, based on customer desires, I need to be able to build a certain percentage of electric and a certain percentage of uh, ICE. Mm. And that's, for, for the time being, no one has the crystal ball. And, and quite frankly, it's, it's, it's the requirement because we're building for the world there. And when you build for the world, there, there's gonna be certain markets that maybe two, three years from now, they're 100% electric and they're sourcing from us. There's other markets, it might be 10 years from now uh, before they're even there. And so we've gotta be able to build both in that factory and, and make it work under one roof. And when these cars go down the same line, that GLS and then the EQS SUV, it, when you say sequencing, it, when the battery goes into the vehicle, are they literally on the same line still, or is it? Does it go on an offshoot? Because that, that would seem yeah. like a lot of extra time that a car is sitting there doing nothing. The ICE car. Yeah. The, well, in the I know the uh, in concept yeah. they would be right back to back, and yeah. you'd marry them in a in a very similar fashion. Yeah. That's in concept. Yeah. So we're still kind of working this. Part. Yeah, and that's 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 where we'll be. And uh, so ultimately when the factory is up and running at full speed, we will have the ability to build both going down the line at the same time and really everything in between because you need to be able to build uh, plug-in hybrids, you need to be able to build electric, and, and then there's ICE. So if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, the manufacturing side of the business becomes far more complicated oh. than it used to be. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's incredibly complicated because we're, tr we're doing both. Um, so it's the, it's the best of times on the sales side. It's, it's in, a, in an essence of the worst of times on the other side, does just because it's more complicated. Does that mean you've had to staff up differently on the manufacturing side? I don't mean the line person, but yeah. the people that engineer the manufacturing, the people that actually design the process. Yeah, for sure there's different uh, levels of expertise you need yeah. uh, because it's very different. And uh, just whereas, uh, you know, the, the most variation you might have had is a four-cylinder, a six-cylinder, an eight-cylinder, those are in essence internal combustion engines. This is something dramatically different. So. Uh, the investment in the experience of it's different engineers, it's different, uh, you know, under, understanding battery cell chemistry versus understanding, you know, the difference between a connecting rod and a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and a, and a pinion gear. It, you know, it's just, it's, it's something that you don't often find people with the same skills. Okay, so that begs the question, this effectively now is an SUV factory. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why wouldn't you put more capacity in that factory for passenger cars? We think about when we build a factory is where are the large share of those cars going? Mm. And, it, and, and honestly, we made that decision, gosh, back in probably the early 90s, yeah. that decision was made. Uh, turns out a pretty good one uh, because back then <laughs> we, were, bet, we, we, yeah. we were probably, and I'm just g guessing, but probably you know, our, our share of SUV was essentially zero. 
and and who knew it would be 60 70 75 percent today um, so that pays dividends for us just because obviously logistically uh, very easy um, and then from a taxation and uh, and uh, if you think about tariffs and things like that uh, your local production is always rewarded in a sense that you don't have the same costs associated with bringing a car from a, from another country so it's not a coincidence that the majority of your cars sold come from a lower tax environment it, it you know we're, we're very fortunate that it worked out that we're building yeah. our SUVs there and obviously there's a, you look at other manufacturers they're doing the same thing and uh, because if you're in a market where you know that the largest share if we build uh, you know it's two three hundred thousand cars coming out of Alabama if you mm. know a, the largest share in essence is coming to North America mm. then that's where you want to be Okay, so I know you're up in Canada here now, but we recently had quite a bit of politics impact the EV world. Mm, yeah. There's been this bill that's passed, mm -hmm. and there's a whole function where they're going to extend the EV tax credits. Yeah. Um, put aside whether we like it or not. I, we, you and I hey. can have a completely different discussion on that and debate it. But the way it's, it's structured... It's based on the price of the car now, mm -hmm. so it, it peters off as the car goes up in price. Right. But it's tiered differently. You actually get a higher price with a, with a tax credit mm -hmm. for an SUV as opposed to a car. Right. And then another huge portion about it is where is the battery sourced? Yeah. Meaning the, the, the rare earth minerals mm -hmm. that go into that battery, is it from a, a rogue nation? Yeah. That's just passed. Mm -hmm. Is that something you guys took into account when you were making this transition to the EV world in that factory? Or do you now have to go and keel haul the whole system? No, I, I think there's certain things we knew were possible. You know, that's been talked about for a number of years. Um, you know, they, they, at one point they said it needed to be union labor and it could be this, it could be that. So, so there were probably, you know, there's 10 or 15 different factors that you know could come in onto the table. Um, locally sourced production is, is, is one that we, we knew was on the table and we knew we could check the boxes for EQE SUV and EQS SUV. Um, and, you know, local content um, is something that's been a factor. And, you know, that, that's a label right on the car in the U.S. is the percent of local content. So in essence, um, requiring the battery and the, and the elements that go in there is, is in some way an extension of that. Um, and so it wasn't off the table by any means. I, I think you always know that. But the you're not there yet. Not there yet. That's kind of like yeah. the next frontier. Yeah, yeah, that's the next frontier. And I think because we prioritized get the car in the factory. Mm -hmm. uh, if you wait, I think, and, and say until I get everything right, which never happens, <laughs> right? That's we a wait on that. For yeah, Godot, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and if you wait until you have that perfect utopian scenario, you'll be ten years behind the market. Mm -hmm. So you you take the first opportunity, and and I'm thrilled that we have the cars in the U.S. because that's where they should be, because that's where many of them are going. Um, but the the next extension of that is. What are the, you, you look at the largest value items going into a car. Mm -hmm. Internal combustion, it's engine transmission. Um, on a, obviously on an EV, it's going to be battery and electric motor. So the next logical source is where can I get those locally? A, so I'm not at the whims of other nations or what's going on in those nations. And, and I think, in essence, the pandemic has shown us that local sourcing is probably a good idea. And how much of a risk you can have yeah, by yeah. dealing with rogue nations. Right, yeah. and, and not even, and, and whether it's, because it's even a risk just to have to deal with something somewhere else, mm. because we don't know how, because uh, I look at, for example, how the U.S. or Canada are handling uh, COVID today. It's much different than it was two years ago, but it's also very different than they're handling it in China. So because you have to then think about, well, how is my supplier, how are the countries in my supplier network how are they handling whatever's going on? Um, to, it could be a pandemic. It could be a war in Ukraine. Uh, you know, th that has shown us that, hey, there, there's, uh, there are these factories everywhere that could have an impact on us. What can we localize? And uh, so in, in essence, you, there's certain opportunities that that tells you, hey, uh, who would have known that, uh, you know, we've, there's, a, there's one of our top leather suppliers is in the Ukraine. Um, wiring harnesses get made in Ukraine. I feel like everyone now is an expert on where wiring harness comes yes, from. Yes, yeah, exactly. And not just car people, but I didn't yeah. know about the leather. 
Yeah, yeah, and it just happens to be, with, and there's four or five factories for this leather supplier, but one of the ones that we use happens to be in Ukraine because they have an amazing workforce and they source the material, and and so that was just something you don't, you wouldn't have known. Uh, you know, like, I didn't know a lot of neon gas comes from the Ukraine, and what do you need neon gas for? You need neon gas to make semiconductor wafers. <laughs> Who knew that? So <laughs> it's just one thing after another after another. Um, and, you know, and the logistical problems of we don't have enough ships that bring cars across the ocean. Um, and when the Felicity Ace went down, that was one more. So we're 6,000 units in the hole on top of the 50,000 units we were probably in the hole as an industry for those types of things to, you know, to get cars from here to there. So if I only have to put them on a train or a truck, <laughs> it's always easier. So how in 2022 can the management board running that factory plan yeah. You can't plan for any eventuality it's because you literally had a black swan event and then all these weird things that came out of it. Yeah, yeah. How do you plan? You know, you do the best you can with it and you, you invest in as much, uh, let's say, backup c capacity or alternatives as you can. And But but you can't always get it right. And so you just, you, you do the best you can. I, uh, my mentor in life, six foot five tall guy from the boogie down bronx kind yeah. of talk like this yeah. <laughs> used to, everybody used to call him mr terrible because he'd walk into a restaurant and he'll the the host would say how you doing today and he'd say terrible <laughs> <laughs> and it was a whole bit to see if people were paying attention yeah anyway his whole saying was uh work your plan and plan or plan your work and work your plan yeah and i added something to it which i think is relevant in 2022 but i added mm -hmm. it back in 2000 plan your work work your plan but be willing to come up with a new plan when life doesn't go according to yeah, plan. Yeah, that's, so that's exactly it. Spends today. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You're you're doing you're you're making the best of the opportunity you have, and uh, I, you know it's funny. We all have these things we came out of the pandemic with. Mine was be thankful for the problems you have. <laughs> I'm gonna steal that material from you. <laughs> you can have that one. Okay, so this is the point of the episode where we're gonna turn this around to the audience, mm -hmm. and I think we need to get feedback what they feel on those three key points in that bill. So uh, should there be federal tax credits mm -hmm. for up to, I think, $80,000 for an SUV? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, the general thought process on limiting that credit yeah. based on where the materials and the battery come from. Mm -hmm. And then there's the third one you brought up, which is, is it locally grown? Mm -hmm. Is it organic to the US? Yeah. Yes or no, why or why not, what do you like about it, what you don't like about it, let us know in the comments below yeah. or via our social media, Moto Man TV, all in word, Moto Man TV, all in word, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. This way, uh, Bart and his folks at Mercedes could do some more planning because yeah. apparently that's the hard part. We appreciate the feedback. And uh, a little bit behind the scenes here. So mm -hmm. uh, we have set this up in the garage here. The original plan was to do this out in the driveway there because we've got this beautiful, huge yeah. yard. There it is. We were going to have five Mercedes. We're going to have... This 560, so R107, we got that 2.316. We got a CLS uh, 53, 53, and we've got a GT53. It was going to be a cornucopia <laughs> of Mercedes for you, Bart, because I never could see any more. Hey. Uh, but it pissed down right, so we had to do it in the garage. Yeah, hey, well, but you know what makes it great? I walked in here, I could smell tires, oil, and all those fun parts that we like to, you know, that end up under our fingernails. Dude, this is a proper ratio. Yeah, oh, for sure. This yeah. is the real deal. Yeah. Like, this is where Target Newfoundland team was yeah, started. Yeah, I'm going to go home and I'm going to smell like this. It's going to be Your great. wife's going to love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, eau de garage. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can offer you a cigar to make it smell better. Yeah, hey, that <laughs> that's only that much better, right? Okay. Till we see you in the next episode. Bish beta.